Welcome to Guitar Finger Exercises course. Speaking music. Working through this course gives you an easy way to practice your guitar with no knowledge of the guitar needed. And it's going to help you build up your touch, your muscle memory on the guitar. My name is Micah Blake, and I'll be your instructor for this course. I have a master's certificate from Berkeley School of Music. And I have over 20 years of music experience with 10 of those years in teaching. Now, at the end of this course, you'll be able to fluently play through six different exercises that help you play different necessary guitar skills that you will later be able to build upon and modify as your talent grows. You will learn to play both strumming techniques and single notes so that it will cover a large range of playing styles. Now this would be ideal for someone who's starting out on the guitar or someone who used to play and is getting back into guitar, a good practice exercise for them. It gives you a good routine for those who lack the willpower in the past to keep up those practice sessions. I know we've all been there at times. Now it is not a good class if you plan to just learn like one song or you only want to learn a particular song for like a friend or something. It's for a long-term goal. I look forward to working with you, so take a look over the course and preview a couple of sections. Now, this is a great exercise to start out with because it not only strengthens our fingers, but it also stretches them out so that when we're playing more complicated and advanced songs, we're already two steps ahead of the game. Now, all we're doing is putting our first finger, pointer finger, on the first fret and playing the note. Now we put, trying to leave our first finger still on that fret, we put our second finger on the second fret and play a note. Try to leave all of those on there, put our third finger on the third fret, and then we put our fourth finger on our fourth fret. A lot of people have the hardest time with your pinky right there, but after we do that, we go down a note to our A string. And we do it again. Now, after we've moved down all of our strings to the very bottom, we can actually do this again, but start our first string on first first finger on our second fret. Now, after we get the hang of this, this is going to go really quickly. And after we do this for a while and start to feel comfortable, we want to start paying attention to how these notes are sounding. At the beginning, I just want your fingers there. If it sounds fuzzy or whatever, it's really not a big deal. Um, your fingers are still getting exercised. Even if you don't even play the notes, you just be putting your fingers on all the frets, that is helping. But now that we've done it a while, we want each note to sound out strong and true, ring out. Now this is a really quick warm up. So no matter if you're beginning or you've done this for a while, just do it after you tune up your guitar. Do it like two or three times, all the way down, one, two, three, four, say like five times. It won't even take you five minutes, I'm sure. Um, it helps your fingers kind of remember what they're doing every single time. So, like we said, first finger on the first fret, second finger on the second, third on the third, fourth on the fourth. Go down a string. Go down a string again. Um, if you're starting to do them up here, it's going to feel a little bit different. So it's, if you're starting to do chords and things up here, um, start doing your fret crawlers up here. Um, in reality, they're actually probably easier the higher up the fretboard you get because your fingers aren't needing to stretch out quite as much. Everything's closer together. So every single morning, tune up your guitar and do your fret crawlers. 
stretch out those fingers, let them get nice and strong, play out those strings so they ring out true and loud. Now, finger picking is often just playing a chord, but you're not playing them all at once like strumming. It bounces back and forth between different strings to create a really nice rhythm pattern for you. Now, you can either do this with a pick, or you can use your four fingers, or five fingers actually, often people use their thumb. Um, or there's actually specific picks for each finger if you want to do it that way. Um, anyway, today we're just going to use a pick, and I'm going to show you a really basic picking method. Now, for different songs, there are, I'd say, hundreds of different picking methods. Um, and it's just like a normal rhythm pattern. You can create rhythms, you can create different ways of picking. So we're gonna show you a really basic one. What it's gonna do is gonna play a low note, a semi-high note, then in between that high note and the low note, and then the highest note, and then you just go back down a little bit. So, so low, high, lower, high, low, low. four strings, like on D, it's going to be the four, two, three, one, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three. That makes sense. So, four, two, three, one, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three. Then we go back to G. as simple as it is when you get comfortable with it same as any exercise start doing it with the drum track see if you can keep up with it and stay on pace do it with different chords do it with different patterns like it's endless of how we can change it to keep things fresh and to really have fun with it you can even do a type of finger picking with strumming so um, there's going to be a bonus finger picking part. Um, so a lot of times rhythm with all different instruments. Um, piano does this a lot. It'll have a high note that it goes back to. So they'll be doing all kinds of crazy stuff and the low stuff and it'll just keep hitting this high note like every um, one beat. So one, two, three, Four, one, two, three, four. Doesn't matter what changes down here, that constant is up top. And a lot of times with guitar, you can see that too. Or it'll be like a da 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 da. So what we're gonna do here is just do. So you're gonna keep hitting that that's what's going to ring out through the song we're going to go back and forth between g and d so that makes sense to you but like I said that's kind of just like a extra bonus one for you okay so this whole course is about practicing 
Now, I've shown you all the individual ways to practice, but here's what it would look like if you just woke up in the morning and started your practice for the day. Here's an example of that. We get out our guitar. First thing we do is tune it up. I use an electric tuner, so I pull it out. Make sure everything's sounding good. Okay. Sounds good to me. Put that away. Start my fret crawlers. some rhythm practice. So I think in my case I'm gonna do some chords and do some rhythm based on what strings I'm doing. So I'll play I'll lose a string every single time I do this. just do a tiny bit of finger picking. Well, obviously that didn't sound perfect. That's kind of the point of practicing. You do it over again until you are comfortable with how it's sounding the way you want it to. Then I'll go over some chords. Here's a G chord. I'll play, play them all together. Play them one at a time to make sure they're sounding good. Make sure the strumming sounds good together. Play a D. So play them all together. Play them one at a time. Let's go to a C. Play one at a time. That didn't sound too good. Let's see where I messed up. There we go. They all ring out nice that time. And uh, maybe an E minor. do is I would do my song of the week or song of the month or whatever ended up being. Um, this is the point where I spent like five minutes right there doing some practices. I now feel like I am pretty warmed up. I actually enjoy a lot of those things. It's kind of, like I said, mindless. Kind of just get into it, especially if I'm playing with some drum beats or something. Um, I don't have a pressure of having it sound exactly like a song, so I just play through it, feels good to me. Um, so like I said, personally, I enjoy just playing around like that. Um, but most people learn music to learn a song. So you pick a song and you start working on it. Work on it until um, one of two things. You're bored of it, and you learned everything that you need to from it. Even if you can't play it perfectly, that really doesn't matter. Just, you're done with the song. You're happy with it, you're done. Or two, you've learned it so well that you're not actually, you can't learn it any better. You're done with it because you finished the song. This could be two weeks, could be a week, a day, could be a month. 
doesn't really matter. Keep a song list of what you've learned, chord charts of them, so you can go back and flip through them, especially the fun ones. Um, it's also a really good record to see what you've learned after you know a month, a year, whatever it is. Um, you'll start developing this book of songs that you've learned and you've enjoyed. Um, it's a really good archive. But that is our example of practice. Speaking music. So, we went over some pretty awesome exercises in this course, and I hope they're both educational and beneficial for you. Now, I tried to make this course so that whether you knew nothing about guitar at all or you've played for years, that you could find some benefits in this course in helping you practice. I think for those who haven't learned very much about guitar, you should be able to incorporate these practices in your courses now, but modify the exercises as you grow and your talent grows. Continue to do these exercises and to hone your skill over time, and soon you'll find you are where you hope to be.